Like, you know what I mean? Like, J.D. Vance thinks we're all witches. So yeah, we might for as well sure. Just, uh, embrace it. Embrace it. And hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the south. Powers of fire and feeling, hear us. And I'm Gabe. Hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the west. Powers of water and intuition, hear us. Excellent. And we're currently seeking our other two corners uh, so that we can possess the powers of witchcraft and exact revenge on the world. <laughs> yes, and we are the ghouls next door, and I guess today we're the witches next door, um, where we talk spooky stuff of yeah. the um, historical and psychological magic influences behind our cinematic fears and continuing our kids' uh, teenager scare, the living out of me. me. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the craft. So just as a a quick cleanup. <laughs> we were originally going to cover Jawbreaker. You might have heard that in our last episode if you stayed till the end. Um, but we felt like not like Jawbreaker didn't super hold up. <laughs> There's a lot of problems with it. I get it because it, again, it's dark comedy. It's similar to Heather's in that way, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think Heather's really did it all, and Jawbreaker was trying to be Heather's. Um, and so we decided instead to pivot into um, not explicitly millennial. It's definitely a cusper. People have said it's it's a um, a zenial, like an x um yeah. film because the age of the teen girls in it is like being in high school in late nineties where like mm-hmm. my millennial existence is like, I was five, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. uh, it's, it's just a little different from yeah. like, ge- like generation span for many, many, many years. And that, I think that's what people mistake too. Like people are still blaming millennials for issues. Like we <laughs> you got 40 year olds right like yeah, <laughs> they're, we're old they're, they're doing it you know like so that's what the craft is it's definitely on the cusp uh kind of closing out gen x opening up millennials um and in that like in between time so that's what we're we're covering today um we did cover the craft in the way incredibly way back machine mm-hmm. when it was before we did um video content i, mm-hmm. I want to say it was like it was early, early double digits. Uh, and it was with a guest. Um, so it wasn't as covered in the yeah. same way that we do it now. Cause it was just more around the, um, the idea and the exploration of women in horror and, mm-hmm. uh, the power of women in horror and the craft is definitely, uh, doing that. And, you know, there's, you know, with media literacy glasses on, right? Uh, I had to like fight. It was like one half of my glasses was nostalgia and mm-hmm. the other half was media literacy because I still do still really love and appreciate this film. It is one of my all-time favorites. It is a comfort watch. It's silly, but it's also yeah. like, you know, kinship and you can like find, like feel seen in a way mm-hmm. um, that's really nice. And I think that's just something with girls in witchcraft, right? Like, <laughs> like yeah. femmes and witchcraft um at points of their life where it's like i could you know pretend to have magic powers and that gives me some kind of comfort and i know you can't okay. wanted to do that <laughs> <laughs> want to be a witch once upon a time my life is okay and oppression can't hurt me because i have powers that's what witchcraft is uh mm-hmm. really. Um, and that's what it was for me in my teen years. Uh, I didn't do anything. I just like wanted to feel like I had any sort of semblance of control of my life because <laughs> I didn't and I needed that. So, and also it's like, you look at society and you're like, why is everything so, ah, mm-hmm. why everything sucks so hard? And I have no control <laughs> over any of, why are you telling me how I'm supposed to be as a person and my identity? What's happening? Yeah. And witchcraft is like a response to that. And just like marginalization in general. 
Yeah, because it's a it's a vulnerable time, right? We we mm -hmm. talked about that in our Heather's episode. I think it's just something that comes up any time that we talk about young people is that it's a vulnerable time where you're literally your brain is finishing is doing the finishing touches, mm -hmm. right? So um, it can't develop. You're just a yeah, little, you're just here, you're just a little guy, you know. Yeah. And the world just hurts in so many ways. And you're trying to figure yourself out and everyone else is trying to do that. And so it's a lot of hurt people, hurt people. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think witchcraft is, is, is a fun way to do that. And it's a, it's a play pretend that is accessible as you're getting closer to adulthood. Um, because yeah. there's a little bit of like seriousness to it and it's not so much playing pretend like I'm going to be a fairy, you know, yeah. it's, I'm a witch, <laughs> which seems yeah. way cooler. <laughs> we learn yeah. about those in history books. So yeah. I like historically, it is often just like, as I said, like a response to like wanting power back, but like also just like women existing and in mm -hmm. community with each other so in the eyes of the church we are all witches any mm -hmm. single woman with a cat is a witch <laughs> yeah. even married ones that don't have kids <laughs> you a know witch. Any, anyone who just like meets up in public and is like we're friends which yeah you know, ultimately so do you have a bank we, account witch which yeah <laughs> like you know what i mean like jd vance thinks we're all witches so yeah for well sure just, uh, embrace it embrace it Harness so that's what i'll talk the about eclipse. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pull, pull, pull the corners you know it takes a, it's just like a whole it's like, it takes the whole the, it takes the whole country maybe yeah. yeah and i you know i think um there's something really exciting and and like you said historically right it's it's been women have been labeled as witches when they're unconventional, non-traditional, or when yeah. um, they've used like knowledge, like they're like, yeah. <laughs> you've been like science. labeled. Yeah, yeah. You're labeled a witch because you have cats. And so um, now you don't have m rats or mice around your house because the cats are eating them. So you don't have the plague. And isn't that yeah. weird that you're the only house that doesn't have the plague or, yeah. oh, you happen to wash your hands because you put <laughs> yeah. two and two together. You must be a witch or, um, oh, all of these terrible men uh, who are known to abuse and harm their wives just keep just Dying. having heart attacks or just dropping dead after they've gone to go visit this lovely friend who practices like, some herbal medicine. Yeah, it's almost like poison is like everywhere. Like you can just chew on hydrangea petals and be killed by cyanide. Like it's literally, it's <laughs> everywhere. Botany is a thing. Uh, and yeah. they're like literally, you know how to make medicine? Which. Which. <laughs> You're not a man specifically and you know how to make medicine? Which. Which. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you want to think about, <laughs> and you also want to consider the woman's experience in mm -hmm. medical terms like that's also witchcraft um yeah. we don't think yeah. about them yeah no i'm gonna yeah it's like the 90 percent of my stuff yeah, just like, that's crazy because it really yeah. was it's just very much like any kind of you exist just and aren't like yay oppression which so it's mm -hmm. absurd it's ultimately absurd. yeah if you're the not a valid life. yeah the kids have valid concerns ultimately like as they're yeah. growing and witnessing society being like that seems wrong all the adults are like, nah, it's fine, little guy, shut up. And it's like, actually, no, mm -hmm. I, there's a valid point that you're making. And I get why you want to be a witch, because none of us are doing anything. You know? it's yeah. a response to solving problems, ultimately. Yeah, especially when you're feeling hopeless. And that's yeah. what, like, this film kind of sums that up in a it's a teen it's a teen film in their teen issues um though some of them uh, uh, I, honestly all of them have heavier things implied with them and that were you to take this into an adult setting um would be even more severe than it is i think um mm. but it's approached in a very teen way like the answers are still very teen ish it's it's different than Heather's in that I think it cares a little bit more for the for the kids in it, um, but also suffers from similar things. And I'll talk about that in my section. I think it suffers from a similar um, idea in or like to have this dark comedy, you have kind of have to do this. Um, yeah. But it still sucks, <laughs> yeah. um, especially when you have witchcraft as this powerful tool. like they tap mm -hmm. into witchcraft. And they could do 
so much. It's yeah. like, I wish I could tap, like, actually, it's probably best for the world that I can't tap into witchcraft because I'd be fixing up a lot of problems. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? it be a good thing, though? Yeah, give me some power. Yeah. I, <laughs> ultimate it's power not, corrupts ultimately, right? No, um, I, it's also just like, if you're thinking of like anime logic, it's like all this trauma and I don't go super saiyan. Isaiah says that all the time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> where Where is my awakening? You know? Yeah. So... Yeah. It's also like it's just a different version of that. <laughs> um, but let's hop into it and I'll tell you about the craft. Um, you probably already know. You've probably seen it. Most people have. Um, I won't say I'm I'm paving new ground here. I think it's weird for our show to exist and not have the craft <laughs> and the oh, list of films that we've yeah. covered in in something in the, in a substantial way. And so Definitely wanted to cover it and just geek out about it. And just something I really love, you know, and it's it's one of those films, too, uh, that has, I mean, there there's a bunch of girls who survive in it. So she's not mm -hmm. necessarily a final girl, but it's one of the first times they saw like a black girl on screen, you know, with her yeah. curls proud. Um, and Rachel True is just like a hero <laughs> yeah. in, my, in my eyes. And I think it's just like so important that she was there and that her story was treated the way that it was. Although, again, I think there's more that could be said and done. Um, yeah. But this is why I preferred it in this setting versus like throwing racism into heathers where mm -hmm. they were not at all prepared or even willing to acknowledge that racism still kind of existed yeah. um <laughs> and to be fair 1996 they weren't really acknowledging it either, either. um but they were they did a, a little bit so little bit. <laughs> and they gave us rachel too so i'll take it uh so the craft is from 1996 and it's about a newcomer to a catholic prep high school falls in with a trio of outcast teenage girls who practice witchcraft and they all soon conjure up various spells and curses against those who anger them it's directed by andrew fleming yeah and it stars a plethora of amazing um characters uh and actors and has um sydney and billy from scream before yeah. they were that um and it was this performance that really uh got her the the job um to be sydney so um yeah. let's talk about how is this magic how is this the power um it's <laughs> There's so many things like they, it's a lot of like, uh, like force feeding things. And they talk about my non and it's a little creepy because I'm just like, like, what is it? You know, because if it's a dude, I ain't worshiping it. Um, yeah. But if it's just the world yeah, just and the, the potential world. and like energy and just like existence connecting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's the um, my idea of the simulation is just nature is like that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like as nature simulates i don't think there's like a dude pulling strings i think yeah. nature just be doing stuff and it's crazy exactly there are rocks <laughs> in the ocean in total darkness producing oxygen like what do you mean and why does it's everything alive. have the circle you know the little circle yeah. like everywhere why do things everything work like particularly perfectly it's witchcraft um it's <laughs> <laughs> so the craft is an unapologetically dark film where 14 girls live out a powerful fantasy of retribution and justice they fight against a slurry of teen issues from bullying racism poverty body image abuse suicide sexual assault and otherness using witchcraft these girls who were once the most powerless are now empowered by supernatural forces allowing them to fight back and these are real challenges that high schoolers face and the craft treats them with the seriousness that they deserve um even in the midst of very hokey silly um special effects yeah and plot in words because <laughs> it's still a teen movie yeah. um so new girl sarah arrives at school and is intent on coasting through head down and surviving after her own close call with death by her own hands um she is instantly clocked as a potential fourth witch for a small coven of outcast girls at the school and after being hurt by a love interest sarah does join the group and with their fourth corner activated so need all four corners of the world um they are able to tap into their supernatural potential um, they each use this power to reclaim their lives and exact justice on the harmful forces in their lives. So um, Sarah exacts revenge on the boy uh, who spread malicious rumors about her um, by casting a spell that turns him into a groveling, obsessive fool, which I found really interesting that this was her approach to um, 
revenge, right? Yeah. Like where Veronica and JD, which like Veronica had almost the exact same thing happen. Yeah. Um, in Heather's, right? They responded to sexual rumors with death and identity sabotage. Um, yeah. Sarah asked for true love and care. Yeah. She was like, I wish you were just actually genuine when you just, did that. Yeah. You uh, which is, a, it's a, for a teen girl, like good on her. Yeah. <laughs> I know adult women who would not be like, just to love me anyway. Yeah. Um, instead of being mad, like why not be mad? Yeah. Um, Bonnie heals her painful physical scars and unlocks her potential for vanity and popularity. She was literally just like always covering herself up. And as soon as she stopped doing that, people were like, whoa, you're hot. Which is true, yeah. um, but she was hot the entire time. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like oppressive beauty standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that she takes advantage of, and I do like she gets they they like Sarah picks at her for it. Um, but to me, I'm like, that's what everyone else is doing to her. Let her have a turn. Like, excuse you. <laughs> like, why? Are you kidding? Who is this hurting? She's this little mean girl now. Yeah, she's pretty. Leave her alone um <laughs> Rochelle takes retribution against a racist bully um which is on like Nancy's is also super valid um and not to say like not to diminish Bonnie um or Sarah's situation but Rochelle had like real like this is a hate crime <laughs> you know? yeah. like these people are awful um and this is one where I'm like you're not allowed to tell her what she should be doing in this situation. Yeah, <laughs> this is one girl. you have no business to be saying anything about. Okay, ma'am. Um, yeah. And then Nancy transforms her family's financial misfortunes and strips herself of the white trash label um, that haunted her. And Nancy, corrupted by the power and feeling her position threatened by the naturally talented witch Sarah, quickly turns on her. And she rallies yeah. the other witches against her, using their powers to now torment Sarah until she has no choice but to fight back. Um, yeah. because it turns that the, the villain isn't the shitty boy or the bullies or our social expectations for young teen bodies to look. It is this young girl got too much power. Let's <laughs> see. Well, that's like, don't, you yeah. don't want that. It's, um, yeah, it's silly. It's, it's silly. A, oh, no. so we were going, we were going so far. We were going so far. Yeah, we're um, so close. Because the craft does dive into this like innate patriarchal fear of female power that is the reason why they oppress an entire gender and like gender adjacent folks, yeah. right? Is that there's a fear of this power. Um, the the per, the appearance and behavior of Nancy, like she embodies so much of like the threat of this time period of what like mm -hmm. girls could turn into, Seven which, so. yeah, which was like, she's comfortable in her body. She's quirky. She had like the noose in her locker. Um, yeah. she, you know, it, it's like when we covered the, that sorority film, I'm totally blanking on it. And it was like, the girl was smoking and openly talking about having sex and everyone was like oh no oh yeah yeah, yeah. when it was, yeah. Marina, when it was um, f the patriarchy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the patriarchy series. that's what nancy is like she's like a modern or at the time a modern version of that which was this grunt girl who was like i embrace my female power um and my innate power too and yeah. that is a threat to the traditional powers that yeah. be and so <laughs> so it's like uh actually i am white and wealthy so you lose <laughs> yeah well to, she's not wealthy because she is like we don't have any money um but she is definitely of privilege and way better off she's not yeah. white trash right yeah. um i'll get to that so um it delves into that patriarchal fear and it also explores what transpires when women are together and they forge these intense bonds that often um during the intensity of adolescence can mm -hmm. turn into a, the mess <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to say nicely um i think we've been in those relationships where it's like fire and then you're like you're dead to me um <laughs> because these relationships are profoundly powerful and when wielded by young minds can quickly turn vicious with yeah. so many emotions in flux during a pivotal time in mental growth it's easy to see how things can get out of hands and so the craft is both a cautionary tale against ultimate power and its corruption and it's also a tale of empowerment and in those short glimpses of sisterhood and joy and of becoming their own heroes even if only for a moment um we see the height of teenage girls and acceptance um 
And I do really love just like when there's just that in the middle, there's just like a, a beautiful montage of yeah. friendship that I think it, and, and that when they're happy. getting caught when they're supporting one another mm-hmm. even before the powers it's just like caring for one another and so like literally supporting them right like lives of feathers yeah. so as a board um and unlocking their potential and in yeah. radiating that joy with one another that as they start to like differ on how we need to exact our retribution that's when we kind of get them you know the breaking down of that social dynamic. But I think there's just something really beautiful and tender in the middle there um, before it gets a little too much when Nancy feels threatened. Um, yeah. Reasonably so. <laughs> um, so speaking of light as feathers, stiff as a board, let's get into um, unpacking some of the things about uh, the craft. So women do, unfortunately, in this society and like femme presenting folks, um, do often feel powerless in uh, f- to change overwhelming circumstances, right? Like <laughs> how many times have we had women now running for president and people are like, what about her emails? Um, you have a monster. Anyway, um, and I th- just think that the craft offers us a compelling fantasy where wrongs can be magically righted. <laughs> it gives us this outlet that we can have a glimmer of hope if we just had something in our court right and so Mm -hmm. something that we do feel in our corner in one of our four corners um and it's something that we feel a strong desire for in today's climate um and i think the lesson there is like if we all come together (laughs) if we all activate the corners um put differences aside we could do something really magical um and in comparison to other edgy teen dark comedies like heathers or jawbreaker while addressing serious issues like bullying racism abuse against the backdrop backdrop of silly cg horror effects and high school drama uh the film still offers a severe and honest approach to the horrors that the girls are experiencing um it was very believable even in the goofy day. i know ne- it didn't take away when her fingers turned to snakes i was like that's fun <laughs> i was like i love that it's scary when she's got the bugs oh i was like no the <laughs> um yes yeah, as cg as silly as the 90s it could be i was like it still gets me it's yeah. just like the concept. It's creepy. So in the craft, witchcraft goes beyond mere teenage rebellion for the young girls, becoming a way to achieve what seems unattainable, power, control, and autonomy over their lives. So for many girls, witches represent their first encounter with feminism and the sacrifices women make to gain control, um, usually pulling the strings from the darkness, right? Because it's dangerous to be in the light. So they embody the darker unspoken desires and the frustration of being underestimated. And unlike young men who can cause harm in their learning and still escape repercussions, girls don't get a boys will be boys scapegoat. Yeah. They get blamed because they wore something that caused a boy to act out um, instead of why did that boy do that? And mm-hmm. leave that girl alone. Um, and the film portrays how Nancy and her friends embrace the darkness as their first taste of freedom, driven by a desire for liberation rather than safety or kindness. And Nancy's ultimate mistake is not the darkness she should succumbs to but her refusal to conform to societal expectations. They want you to think it's because she got corrupted. Yeah. Uh, that's I don't think that's exactly the point i think she got to the point of that desperation because she did not have any support because no one cared about her as much as they cared about everybody else (laughs) even as little as they were doing it right so this brings me to a strong takeaway i had for the film in this watch with my media my half media literacy glasses on um that for all the progress that it made in showing us the strength of feminine friendship companionship and innate power it also undermined much of that in its final act By warring these girls against each other and turning Nancy into an unsympathetic creature corrupted by power, like hysterical, like literally the word for that, right? Like her in the end, maniacally laughing, first of all, amazing performance. But second of all, like it's so, it doesn't feel satisfactory at all. (laughs) It feels harmful. Like it hurts to watch that. We removed her humanity and the need that she has for care and understanding. She didn't get it from her mom. She didn't get it from school. She didn't get it from this core group of friends she was supposed to have. And so of course she lashed out in the way that she did. And like, we removed the magic from the situation. She had a mental breakdown. Yeah. 
you know, like if this was a different movie, it was a documentary about four good friends. Um, that's what happened to this poor girl. Yeah. So um, Nancy represents a blend of sexiness and danger, right? She embodies the 90s fears about sexuality, alternate alternative lifestyles and rebellious bad girls who threaten to corrupt their peers. Um, in contrast to Sarah, who enjoys a stable and supportive home despite her mother's death, Nancy's home life is marked with by abuse in the unsettling presence of her mom's leering boyfriend, um, poverty as well. Again, the white trash label. Uh, Nancy is further marked marginalized at her upper middle class school like you can also tell by like her attire like she's definitely acting out and being like grunge um but there's also like even in the moments when they're all um in regular clothes and not their uniforms um yeah she's still holding fast to that to kind of distract um from the white trash label that they've been given her even her friends who like joke about it they're like just get over it (laughs) like you're poor and white sucks um (laughs) and so isolated and abused nancy seeks belonging in a close-knit friendship with sarah only to be ultimately rejected by that um because of her desperation um and also the fear of being replaced this is literally all she has sarah um so for sarah witchcraft also comes to her naturally she is a natural witch like she comes in she's like moving her pencil she's been able to do this forever and these girls have been like reading texts that's another thing too is like Nancy's been reading. She's been doing research. She's dedicated her whole life. And this girl's like, who's Manon? (laughs) (laughs) Who's Manon? I can do anything. (laughs) I can do all the things that you imagine that you could do um, in your dreams. And it just happens to be. So she is privileged. And she takes that for granted. And even in the end, weaponizes it against the other girls who are now seen as villains, despite having suffered in the way that they did in the film. Like she suffered alongside them and was with them. And then she's like, well, you're corrupted now. And I still have my magic. Yeah. So I'm better than you. Um, (laughs) Yeah. It's just where it's like the calls coming from inside the house, which is like, it's not, you know what I mean? Like the ones who are doing the oppression and it's putting the onus, like the end puts the onus on women Mm -hmm. when they're not the ones being the oppressor. They should. Yeah. It should not have ended with like, we put her away and she's dealt with now instead of like, we reason with her and we instead meet her with care and love. Yeah. And then we take our powers and now we're like going after bigger threats. Yeah. Like, why didn't she learn that? That's what they do to witches. Ultimately, yeah. uh, anyone who is deemed other is historically Lock put her away. away. She's, yeah. Her life is ruined. She's hysterical, literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And so instead of us like learning, like magic's actually pretty cool, guys. Let's use yeah. it to make a difference. Uh, it was, you gotta get in line. You can use magic, but only in a certain way. So Sarah even scolds the other girls, right? So I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but Rochelle and Bonnie, uh, she specifically scolds them for no longer being nice or like subservient. Like they're no longer like just going with the flow. And like now they're, they get a chance to be the mean girls, right? Yeah. Um, Now they have power and can do what others have been doing to them or just like take advantage of the power that they've been denied forever. Like, yeah. okay. Like, who is Sarah to tell Rochelle how to exact justice from a racist bully? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not saying that you should put Nair into the shampoo of a racist bully <laughs> so that their hair falls out. I'm not saying you yeah. should do that. Maybe you do. Maybe that's a good idea you have now. Um, but like, something ha- like, you know, like, I don't know. That's like, that's a hate crime in so many ways yeah. it's different it's a different level than like a boy spread a rumor about me yeah and it's he didn't yeah, touch you like uh yeah and it's very like white feminism and mm-hmm. it, it came through i mean that's who she is technically so yeah <laughs> you know like but it, she's also accurate. like that to bonnie right like who is she yeah. to ridicule bonnie for her newfound confidence treating yeah. boys and people the way that they treated her like something disposable yeah. Because they were all ignoring her. And now she's like, it's my turn. Why not? Yeah. Let her, she'll learn. And but in a natural exists, way. So it's yes. accurate. But it's also just like. <laughs> she's yeah, she's, not, a girl's girl. yeah. she's <laughs> not a girl's girl. Sarah's not a girl's girl. For sure. No. Um, Sarah sympathizes with Chris. 
even after he lies about having sex with her and then also like crosses boundaries and it's because like he's under the spell but like that desperation came from somewhere like if that's the answer that he has in that moment of desperation like i think that's something to to be said but she still sympathizes with him and she chooses like this fabricated acceptance by a boy over the real sisterly acceptance of the girls right instead yeah. of instead of villainizing nancy's anger towards him yeah. like she Which could have justified. bonded over like because she's dismissing the fact that he did worse to nancy right because he took advantage yeah. of her open sexuality he didn't just spread a rumor about her he actually had sex with her and he gave her an std yeah and then she's desperate to like he did that and tossed me to the side and then now he's following you around like a puppy dog and i like her desperation and trying to get him and like going so far as to changing her face to be sarah like it's such a cry for help and instead she's like yeah. hit the road buddy yeah. um you're a monster <laughs> Like still Sarah wishes to meet Chris with kindness and care, but means Nancy with bitterness and ultimately her punishment. Yeah. And that just bugged me so much. Like, absolutely. I get it. Like, don't, don't murder people. Like she did. Murder. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not justifying the murder of this boy. Um, Cause again, he could still have redemption, right? Like yeah. he he's made still a child. Mistakes. He deserves empathy. I get it. But like, exactly. also, he's not, more deserving of empathy than anyone else exactly not more than nancy like she is definitely crying out for help in all of these yeah. moments and you're like you're evil like that's not that doesn't exist <laughs> she's a child <laughs> she can't yeah. be evil <laughs> yeah. um so if we give nancy any consideration um we would desire a different fate for her so nancy is the victim of assault she is dismissed by her peers and she's uncomfortable in her own home she has no safe space and the one yeah. that she had right like witchcraft and her coven were her only source of solace and it's now taken away easily by sarah who is this natural witch right mm -hmm. so nancy's quest for power through witchcraft is understandable um in an article on collider titled the crafts Nancy Downs, uh, villain or victim of circumstance, writer Megan Kenny emphasizes the flaws in villainizing Nancy in the end without any path to redemption or care. She says, uh, but if we view Nancy as a sympathetic character, one that uses hard work and determination to create the power she was denied due to the factors beyond her control, then the ending reads very differently. Her status at the end of the film, psychologically broken and held against her will, reminds us that the ultimate moral of the craft is that conformity saves and rule breaking harms. Right. Because, yeah. again, she was not a natural witch. She was a studied witch and she was doing whatever she could to feel yeah. any type of control in her, her very mind. uncontrolled life. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then Sarah comes in and just wrecks that and is like, you're the villain. Yeah. Because you were mean to me today. Yeah. Um, I can't sleep. Um, no, absolutely. They were mean. Uh, but we kind of worked it out. Like, I think we're not giving them enough credit like an intelligence that they could have worked it out yeah nancy was not that far gone so for me it was like yes fans grab your power and exact retribution on your foes only not like that yeah. <laughs> not like Don't her protest she like was that. doing it too much yeah like you can't want too much you know you, you can't be depression? angry yes you can't be yeah. angry right like yeah. you can't meet violence with violence right uh Oh, get out of here, Sarah. Um, so just like Heather's, the film ultimately spins a story lacking remorse or empathy for the young protagonist. And they are just as unredeemable, their method for retribution, branding them villains simply for wanting justice to even the playing field. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to have a chance. And instead of like us feeling bad for them, we yell at them. And so despite yeah. this disappointing ending, um, in, in having my media literacy glasses and being like, that sucks. Um, yeah. I have always loved the camaraderie of the girls share and the empowerment of these teens and the tantalizing taste of witchcraft. I appreciate the subversion of horror tropes that the real threat was a fellow teenage girl and not the ales they suffer in the beginning. Like that was kind of fun, um, mm -hmm. growing up, like, Ooh, like we could fight each other. <laughs> Yeah. I just wish like Sometimes we fought we and then we made up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, then we made up and then realized what the real systemic issue was. And then yes, like that part together. two, we break yeah. Nancy out 
and now yeah. we fight the patriarchy. Um, yeah, we're like, you, oh, babe, I know it wasn't all you. It's okay. It's small visions. It's small visions of a young yeah. person. Um, give me the witchcraft and see what happens. Um, yeah. But I think I also really love the the strength in that retort of we are the weirdos, Mister. Right, like th- that's giving like a girl walks home alone at night. Right, mm-hmm. like we think that she's in danger, and then it turns out she's a vampire. Right, like. Yeah. I love that um, because in a world that constantly preys on and manipulates women, we can feel empowered by a story like The Craft um, and envisioning us as fellow witches uh, activating our corners of the earth and coming together yeah. in sisterhood. I think that's the biggest thing is like the community is what strengthened them. Individually, yeah. they're, they're nothing. But when they were together, they were strong. And that's what it is. It's like we all, if we all came together and like cared about each other and wanted to, to like i'll beat up your bullies if you want to beat up my bullies we might even yeah. have the same bullies babe um yeah. let's beat them up together <laughs> do, yeah yeah that so i that's what i love that's my takeaway from the craft is that middle part and i try to like i make up a new ending for the film or a part yeah. two it'd be fun if they're like the an extra ending you know sometimes they have like a special ending yeah you know, like, extended a specific community or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah um that'd be fun but uh witchcraft man i i you know honestly like i totally agree about the ending and i do agree also that i really enjoyed this it was fun watching it i was like i remember like the stressful parts and being like i don't want to see that again but then i watched it and i was like okay it it was awkward for a few minutes but no, mm-hmm. we're here and we're okay um but to start my section i say if teen angst and rage gave us superpowers witchcraft if it were the world would be a different place kind of like gabe said at the beginning where are my powers because i could be doing some stuff you know uh and the craft acted a response to the powerlessness built by many teens during the 80s and 90s we discussed it last week uh but especially femme presenting teens as they dealt with the injustices of society that were super valid <laughs> Mm-hmm. whether it was rage at the system their peers their parents who were failing to protect them or against themselves rage just felt heavy i remember it being that age and being so angry i mm-hmm. think about that all the time because like now it's just sadness because i don't feel rage <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and it's transitioned into that i guess that's like adult rage you know it's just, you just feel like sad um yeah but when i was a teenager oh my god the rage the <laughs> angst i wore makeup like this every day i wanted to be edgy so bad yeah, was, me too. I was so delicate. I was like, don't be mean to me. Yeah. But whatever. I don't care. <laughs> and I very much sympathized and related to Nancy in like her life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just because, yeah, same, babe. I don't know, <laughs> but, like, I don't know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, literally. And then, like, witchcraft acted in this film and then also just like historically acted as a pathway to confidence autonomy love and power it acted as a pathway to community and when approaching men on many of many of them had good intentions and i get it the path to hell is right you know Mm -hmm. with good intentions but like in this case it's like very much like men on was it supposed to be like this evil thing they're talking about it's like it's literally the earth there's rocks as i said in the ocean that produce oxygen with no sunlight which was scientifically known as being impossible, which kind of suggests to me that rocks are alive. You know what I mean? It's like the planet <laughs> and the world are alive. You know what I mean? Like they're doing Nate it. It is crazy. And we, you can never all, understand it. Yeah. And there's a lot of like articles I read that was like correlating witchcraft and other religions and how like they're just saying the same thing. Yeah. They're just saying a different why. And it's like, fine. I want to feel something. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to feel wanna, hopeless. Yeah. And I want the world. I want to understand why the world's doing what the world's doing. I want to know why everything's ah, and mm-hmm. I need something to make me feel better. And like religion acts as that witchcraft acts as that. So they, but the curls of this show, movie, not show, uh, they had wrongs that needed writing. You know what I mean? And justice, mm-hmm. justice that needed to be served. So like, yeah, as Gabe said, like none of <laughs> justice was happening. I don't know why I was so upset about it. <laughs> I mean, don't murder someone. Yeah. Yes. Like, up until that point, we were chill. You know, I'm just like, saying, there like and some shampoo. Fine. Yeah, Catch them every it's time. not that bad. But <laughs> ultimately, witchcraft isn't even like witchcraft. Like for some people, witchcraft is witchcraft. But like for his history, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, it wasn't even that. Witchcraft was a response to oppression. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in this film, 
that's what it was. It was a response to the unfair ways of society. It was treating them. Witchcraft offered a solution where no one else is given solution. There's like, that's how it is. That's just the way life is. Witchcraft offered a solution, mm-hmm. an answer to the systemic oppression that plagued each of them, a solution that otherwise seemed too abstract and out of reach. So in media and within society, witchcraft has often been demonized not because it's actually witchcraft, like not like for any actual religious reason, but because Mm -hmm. witchcraft provided a space for community collectivism. And because of this power, like it used to be illegal for women to join in groups of like five. (laughs) Yeah. And for them to read, it was illegal for women to read. So thinking back to the destruction of midwifery, which I'm going to talk about a little bit and the intentional removal of communities surrounding reproductive rights and freedoms, the scapegoats for this, was that for women to join together, they had to be witches. Because at, in the Inquisition and all that's like, you had to be a witch for them to like have justification. Be like, they with Satan, murder them. Burn mm-hmm. them at the stake, dump them in the river with rocks tied to their feet, light them on fire. I don't care. Yeah. Their <laughs> life is witches. perfect. Why would they be mad? Satan's their friend. <laughs> Just bake a pie. What? Yeah murder them and it was like silly like because half the time as you saw from like the salem which was like none of them actually were witches they're just being women talking to each other and they didn't yeah. like that and they're just being a little different <laughs> and they're like i don't like different i want different to die and isn't that the most western thing you ever heard uh, so <laughs> yeah anyway as gabe discusses in their section much of the struggle of these characters are undermined in the final act because of the fact that they like make it like women are the problem Mm-hmm. And I get it. Sometimes they are. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Intersectionality <laughs> and like white women feminism. Absolutely a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm Just not watch our don't worry, that. darling. Episode. But, like, <laughs> but like, you know, what is the bigger problem? <laughs> the systems of power that do all these things and then make us hate each other so that we can't work together. Like, honestly, I, by the end of the, I was like, they kind of like reprogrammed our brains a little bit to do this mm-hmm. to, like to each other and our, like, do, we're doing the work for them it's frustrating <laughs> so, uh essentially we see the destruction of their solidarity and community through infighting and weaponization of privilege but what about witches and in an article titled labeling and oppression witchcraft in medieval europe by mary ann campbell from washington university they say if we use beckler's definition of de- deviance Uh, as the infraction of some agreed upon rule, we can describe witches as rule breakers, as deviants, very similar to Nancy's declaration that we are the weirdos. Um, And they continue, but we cannot forget, we cannot understand this deviance except against the background of a social fabric of the time period. Throughout much of the historical material on witchcraft, especially church proclamations and convincing testimonies, there run three strands of indictment against witches. One, They did not worship a Christian God. Two, they used magical powers to help or harm people. And three, they threatened or harmed men sexually. Uh, And in other words, the label of witch seemed to have been applied to those who allegedly violated norms of institutionalized religion and medicine and the role of women in patriarchal society uh, and a historical picture of the emergence of these institutions of professional medicine and the Christian church as they developed within the context of patriarchal feudalism might contribute to the explanation of the labelers and the deviants um, mm-hmm. in the which is one which like some well, yeah, it's, obviously i mean <laughs> laws are designed by the ruling class yeah <laughs> so. and history is written by them so it's like you know it is what it is at this point but we're fighting it now <laughs> we're dealing with the consequences of it now and we've made lots of progress but so 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 much more progress mm-hmm. is in the root is in the way you know we're working Mm -hmm. on it uh so witchcraft is so much more than just witchcraft and the use of the term and the demonization of witchcraft in the eyes of the church and the patriarchy has so little to do with actual witches with religion or even the devil it's all about power at the end of the day and who has it and when i say power i don't mean like oppressive all-encompassing power that's the true enemy i mean like basic human rights and autonomy over (laughs) self-actualization um Monopoly. And you're like, they're going to come for us and they're going to just do what we do. And it's like, I, I just want to be a person, bro. I want you to just validate the fact that I have the right to exist mm-hmm. and that I don't have to love you and make babies and yeah. make pie. You know, like yeah. and if someone wants to do that, let them. Cool. That's the whole point. 
<laughs> yeah. If you want a pie without way. arsenic in it, you should have made your own pie. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a whole thing. But like, ultimately, it's like, all people want is to be able to be themselves and exist without the threat of death. Yeah. Then we don't and need to like, fight. Yeah. We literally could just be like, have it. And every single step of the way, like every single push against this oppression has been met with nothing but violence mm -hmm. from the oppressive forces and sabotage, ultimately. Like, what we were talking about last week in the Heather's episode, like, a lot of the reason why we got so much backlash for the women's rights movement is that they didn't want that to happen in the first place. So they made it literally as hard as possible mm -hmm. and provided no supports, no safeguards to actually protect or care about women. So no wonder... <laughs> witchcraft needed to exist in the first place you know like they were calling them witches at the end mm -hmm. of the day so during this period uh and we've discussed this on goals before specifically remember that movie we watched with the two women who were married and they had a baby in a pool and then they sacrificed yeah, the baby yeah we were talking about uh witchcraft and the like oppression of reproductive practices and how mm -hmm. that changed like midwifery and how they destroyed that during that episode I want to talk about it a little bit again, just to like refresher, you know. Um, so midwifery was deconstructed under the guise of witchcraft and also under the guise of being unprofessional or uneducated, says the men who are the only ones legally allowed to receive education. Mm -hmm. um, the ones who later put arsenic in or lead in tampons and then never thought to question doing that. <laughs> yes. They know um, what they're doing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. They're trying to kill us ultimately, but whatever. We're trying to not die. Uh, one day we'll figure it out. But essentially, they had made uh, the church specifically made uh, and deconstructed midwifery, calling it like witchcraft first, but then also mm -hmm. like unsafe, unprofessional, unsanitary, like lesser medicine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They devalue the practice of community, of women, of taking care of each other during like reproductive rights and autonomy you know yeah as people um, who know what's going on because all the practices that we have now like giving birth on your back is the worst way to do that yeah. um and uh, but hospitals do it that way because a man said to do it yeah and like the amount of harm that that causes and also like the entire medical so i'll get into it. it's fine but <laughs> Putting that down for just a second, uh, the gender norms of these time periods extend into modern society. As we discussed last week, Western society has hated women for a long time. Um, as much and much like other films we've unpacked, modern generations, for the most part, are pushing the boundaries of how human beings should be treated. How like Heather's was like, I just want to be treated like a human being. Yeah, it's the whole thing. No, I want to treat, I want you to treat humans better and then treat me that way. <laughs> yeah, better. <laughs> yeah. So how gender identity and sexuality should be pieces of a person's identity that are accepted and loved as they are now something society should be able to decide for another person. Like we should just let people exist and be like, that's rad. I love you. Thanks for doing that. Um, and in being othered by society and within the intersectionalities of that witchcraft and the demonization of that has historically just been anything. It's not normal. We're deviants, you know, at the end of the day. So that's just mm -hmm. us. Uh, in another article titled Reimagining Witchcraft as a Refuge for Marginalized Groups, written by uh, Pallavi Prasad from the swaddle.com, uh, and they impact the root of the word witch, stating, in fact, the word witch comes from the Old English word Wicca, an ancient pagan tradition that reverses the masculine, feminine, and earthly aspects of the Christian God in a not so authoritarian and hierarchical, hierarchical manner. While Christian, Christianity shames deviant sexuality, reserves religious leadership position for men, and gives them permission to subdue the earth and have dominion over every living thing, Genesis 128, witchcraft believes all sexualities are natural and to be celebrated, that women are especially capable of being spiritual matriarchs, and that nature is all-encompassing and sacred. So the obsession with hierarchical societies is actually something that Octavia Butler discusses in her book, Dawn, uh, claiming that in this, this is like the cause of the downfall of humanity, mm -hmm. that like observing hierarchy, the desire for hierarchical structures and power destroys our ability to like live peacefully and thoughtfully towards each other. Uh, and yeah. you had a book about that, right, Gabe? That was, uh, it had a lot to do with hierarchy and like deconstructing it. Mm -hmm. You're reading it. I remember you telling me about it. Yes, I will remember that. 
Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Adrian Marie Brown's book, um, Emergent Strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And how a lot of the struggle within our society has to do with these hierarchies that we put in place and that yeah. don't need to be there. We could just work together. We could just activate yeah. the four corners instead of trying to make a pyramid. Yeah. And if witchcraft is a destruction of the hierarchical power structures and the embracing of identity and inclusion, it sounds like something uh, the powers that would be responsible, reason, the powers that be would be reasonably mad at, hate and demonize. Uh, we're a threat. Mm -hmm. Because that idea is something that they've been trying to squash out of humanity for centuries. Um, so Prasad continues saying, since ancient times, the clergy was in charge of healing the sick. One could even say with seeming magic through the tran transociation of mass magic, magical cures from holy water and the power of relics and saints. Women, however, could not be priests simply because of their sex. But the truth is wise women are healers and to the lesser extent midwives predated the clergy. They have always existed with an inherent connection to herbology and medicine, and in the pre-industrial area and rural areas of Europe, which has cured all descriptions of illnesses with herbs, poultices, prayers, and ointments. The clergy saw them as a threat to their monopolistic power. Thus, it was during the Renaissance and the consequent Inquisition that the first coordinated efforts were made to remove the medicine from the realm of popular culture and establish it as a preserve of a restricted profession only to be practiced by men, specifically priests. Um, and this deconstruction has hurt us, like as a society, as mm -hmm. women, humans, in a mm -hmm. multitude of ways. Making Babies that could be born. <laughs> yeah, making childbirth in the Western world, like largely unsafe. Medicine in the Western world for women, largely unsafe. The like death rates that are coming out, for mm -hmm. women specifically surrounding reproductive and health. specifically black women yeah and like it's astronomical horrifying yeah. and we're not going to see like the true data for that like that get populated enough and like spread around enough for like years and at that point it's too late like the harm has already been done historically the harm has already been done for decades centuries mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a problem, ultimately. But medicine was not made with women in mind at all because that was intentionally deconstructed. The medicine that was in mind, that was inclusive, that was supportive to the all of humanity was destroyed by church. It was burned at the stake. Yeah. Um, and I'm not like demonizing people who go to church. I'm demonizing the institution mm -hmm. of that took the Renaissance and was like, murder all those people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and most of our mental health cr criteria, specifically the DSM-5, was designed around institutionalizing and locking up deviants in the eyes of these systems of power. Mm -hmm. um, Removing anyone, them from society. Yeah, because they were a threat. They were a witch. You had to get rid of them. They were hysterical. Um, so it is interesting that the persecution is so ingrained and perpetuated by society that the church and patriarchal institutions don't even have to do the work of dismantling femme communities anymore, because as the craft says, <laughs> we kind of do it ourselves sometimes. And that's mm. true. Sometimes it's just sad and it's mm -hmm. not the ending we wanted. Um, they have created different things to divide people and created different hierarchies to divide women and pit them against each other. This is where the latter half of the film comes in. Sarah weaponizing, you know, her privilege, both in her whiteness and wealth, her winning on the moral high horse of the arm of the oppressor used against her friends, her community. And it's like, Bleh. yeah, you know? and at the expense of a former friend who was in great need. And I think yeah. that's the big thing is like they were the, the strongest when they were a unit, when they were in community and when they were supporting one another. And that's not to say that when you are in community and you're with people that you're not going to have different ideas of how to do things. Like that's what like disagreeing politically isn't disagreeing that we should all have equal rights. Um, it's how do we fix this problem? And we mm -hmm. differ on the like the path wow. to fixing that problem and like yeah when you're in community people have different personalities people have different um lives that they're bringing with them right yeah different like biases it, that yeah biases yeah um 
all of that is going to affect, you know, the way that we work with each other. And it's absolutely not something that we can like, you know, it, it's something that is learned. And so there's no way that these teens were going to be able to like fully get to that point of like, yeah. you know, not, not being so reactionary. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, of and, course yeah. they're going to feel that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember myself at that age, I was so in drenched in my own trauma that I couldn't get out of my own way a lot of the time too. So it's like, I totally get it. It just also is like, that sucks. I wish like yeah. I could go back in time and be like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, go be a witch. It's fine. Just like, yeah, it'll, you'll witch. get through this. <laughs> So you'll find a fellow thing. witch i would love to have found yeah. a fellow witch i so desperately needed community growing up mm -hmm. um and i never really felt like i belonged in in a group for a very long time like and, I, and it wasn't until i decided to build those groups and to be very conscious of like contributing and accepting care from mm -hmm. a group which is, is a lot of work community can be a lot of work but it, there's so much benefit to that and yeah i think uh what the craft and other films that revolve around witchcraft um have taught us is that there is a power in that there is a power in just like acknowledging that you have it mm -hmm. <laughs> first of all um and then supporting one another um and that yeah deviancy right is is decided by yeah. the quote unquote normal yeah. society right like anything that's weird is is deem that because of um that we we are the weirdos mister and it's because yeah. sir, uh the world has told us that we're weird yeah and like let us come together mm -hmm. even if it's really stressful because i don't like to talk to people like let's still do it even though it's a lot because yeah that's the only way we're gonna activate the four corners and take down the powers that be mm -hmm. uh, and it's way easier said than done everyone gets in their own way a lot of the time but I think if they showed, if we show each other the amount of care that Nancy deserved uh, and like work with each other in that mm -hmm. way. And all the teens in Heathers. Yeah. Right? Like give people a little chance, especially you teens. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Still um, it it's out. rough. And the world yeah. is so scary, even now. Yeah. Um, justice for Nancy, for sure. Um, yeah. and, and like accountability and not, she murdered someone yes like, still. yes <laughs> yeah Care, but, and it's empathy. like maybe if you had stopped and thought about her for a minute before she got to that point we wouldn't yeah. be here but y'all yeah. were like get over it you're poor <laughs> yeah. sorry you're poor and then she got money and it didn't fix the problem because that's not what the problem was it wasn't that she was white trash it was that you were calling her that yeah um so even in her close-knit community she was an other that's crazy poor thing um and again not to say like sarah is like this big villain like she was traumatized like they she yeah. made her believe her family the last remaining part of her family was dead um yeah, not cool absolutely. at everyone was at being all. really mean to each other absolutely <laughs> yeah. like, everyone needed more care and empathy yeah across the board everyone and like more spotlight and more time and more backstory like ever <laughs> lots of people yes. were left out of the conversation in some way it's just we need more care across the board ultimately. yeah we can work together for retribution and like and and to find justice you know and mm -hmm. the, justice looks a lot of different ways and it does not look like murder <laughs> it does yeah. not um sometimes no <laughs> We can't say that. Um, but thank you so much. So that is um, this. It, I am counting as our second Gen X mm -hmm. film. And so the next two episodes will be more solidly millennial focused. But I am, you know, I'm loving it because as similar as teen stories can be, there's a lot of intricacies mm -hmm. in there. Um, yeah. And, and I think also there's generational uh challenges as well like mm -hmm. things there are different things that we're worried about or like focus on um and yeah. we approach some of these um issues in a different lens and yeah. emphasize different parts of it and i think that's what i'm really discovering as we kind of cover these different films is um kind of moving from that to to this so like yeah. you know gen z they're like 
the last that next step after us the next yeah. is like the one right before us where they started yeah. to talk about those things and then we're going to get into millennials where we were like moving forward where we're like wait a second yeah. <laughs> wait because that's exactly it's like you can only meet someone as much as they've met themselves and their country is experienced <laughs> yeah um, yes for sure we see a lot more now so we've met ourselves a lot more now we have the cool. internet you know yeah. it was like yeah it was just so different like um which is yeah i'm just really appreciating this so i hope you also are appreciating it um tell us what your favorite teen horror film is uh what you think about the craft do you think nancy deserves justice or are you like i'm glad she's dead she was crazy um <laughs> or are you like i'm in love with her she was one of my first crushes which is also yeah, allowed yeah. all four of them i was like okay yeah. <laughs> in love well then yeah. the girl the hot girl walked in the, with the wind you know i was like okay that's i'm trying to be her yeah. <laughs> whichever um yeah. yeah so uh yeah leave us a rating remember to subscribe and don't get married let your kids and if they don't you know hopefully they're just okay yeah listen to them let them practice witchcraft yeah if they want there's your little <laughs> your little rants from the ghouls as we always do yeah. you know what it is um yeah fight your battles buds uh yeah. attend the nearest protest i'm sure it's while we can while yeah. we can still protest um yeah. <laughs> without fear of dying so yeah. um yeah thank you bye bye